Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. The Wildcats get their first true road win of Big 12 play against West Virginia, 81-67. to They are now 2-0 in league play, and uh, they advanced to 12-3 and overall. It was maddening early in the game, but eventually, crazy as it may seem, once this team was able to actually – play defense was being physically allowed to play defense by the officiating in the game they locked West Virginia down they held the Mountaineers to just 25 points in the second half outscoring them 41 to 25 they stretched the lead to double digits let it sneak back down to five but eventually lengthened it back out and uh, yeah there there were some serious frustrating moments in this game as there will be with K-State basketball all throughout the season but at the end of the day, they got the win. That was all that mattered going into it. I think it makes you feel a little bit better that ultimately the last, you know, four or five minutes of the game, even, you know, even though there's that party that's like, I've seen ways that K-State can make this be a terrible night for me in the past, uh, you felt comfortable for the most part. And they they put away a bad team on the road, tough environment, tough circumstances early on. And really, even the, the final numbers still kind of bear out that there were tough circumstances when you talk about what West Virginia was coming into this game and what they did over the course of this game. But just from a big picture perspective, what does this win mean for K-State? I mean, big picture perspective, uh, it kind of goes back to what you said and what we both talked about on the YouTube live today. If you missed out on that, you missed out on some fun during the YouTube live, uh, but it, it it's more of like this would have been worse for K-State if they would have lost than it is good for K-State that they won. But this was probably a detrimental loss going forward for the NCAA tournament. This would have been a quad three loss if K-State would have lost. But they didn't. And, you know, it's, it's one where you're never going to complain when you win by 14 points on the road in Big 12 play. But they, there were times where it looked pretty rough but you kind of saw the the mental fortitude of this team that they weren't going to let the tough circumstances of the foul trouble. And every time it seemed like West Virginia took a three, if K-State was even in the vicinity, yeah, it was called a foul in the first half. But it, it's one where, yes, you win and you move on. And the, the win was great. You're still wanting a little bit more from Tyler Perry. You might have swung a little too far in the wrong direction with rotations because all 11 scholarship players played today for K-State at one point and the the lineups were got a little bit wonky and that kind of cost K-State a little bit in the second half but I think we're again seeing Cam Carter become an all Big 12 kind of guy 23 points was really efficient I tweeted out that him and Raekwon Battle kind of just lived at the free throw line tonight it seemed they did yeah look I I think for this K-State team, if you go and you see kind of how it ended up playing out tonight, like they had they had their moments where you're going, this team's still not very good, but they did ultimately do enough to overcome, win the game, and uh, you know, kind of what I was alluding to, and I, I wrote about this in the pick and preview today, is so much about going on the road and taking care of business against a bad team is yes, what you do yourself, and we can all at the end of the game look at it and say, K-State did enough to win this basketball game tonight. They themselves took care of their own business. They they scored it better. Now, the three-point shooting, it, it didn't stay at the same level. There were some struggles there, um, but a guy like Arthur Kaluma came through and had a good night, and think about what we talked about on Sunday with you, me, and Fan, and it was basically him saying, like, one of these big three guys, they have to come through and knock down some shots. Against UCF, Tyler Perry handled it, knocking it down from the outside. Against West Virginia, it was Arthur Kaluma going three of four from three. That was important over the course of this game. But the thing that I wrote about was going on the road and beating bad teams. Yes, it's about what you do mostly, but there's a luck element to it. Like K-State had to avoid bad luck tonight. Bad luck for them, good luck for West Virginia, where – West Virginia entered this game one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the country. They were right at 29%, and they come out in the first half, and it's guns a-blazing from three. Not only are they getting bailed out on some horrendous shooting foul calls from three where they're just 
kicking legs and jumping three feet forward. They were six of 12 from three in the first half, and they got 12 of their 14 free throws came because they supposedly got fouled on three point shots. Like, that is a significant deal. They shot, I mean, that that's that's just massive for a team that was at 29%. The second half, there was one shooting foul from three where it seemed like they probably could have called it on K State. They the, didn't. The and, way the game had gone, it felt like that probably could have been called. And the ref, uh, the ref had even gone over and like kind of explained to the guy. I don't know if he was given the flop motion or just trying to say, like, dude, like you're kicking your leg out and you're jumping like that far forward. Like at this point, we can't really protect you. I'm guessing that the officials at halftime talked it over and were like, okay, we might need to think a little bit about how we're calling this. And K State was able to play their defense because, I mean, really in the first half, if West Virginia is knocking down those shots and they're calling those fouls, you have no defense. You cannot, you cannot play defense there. It's just like you can't play defense. West Virginia goes 2 of 11 from 3. They're 8 of 26 from the floor, so that's just over 30%, not quite to 31%. K-State played phenomenal basketball there, and they did a really nice job this entire game of maximizing the turnovers that West Virginia gave them. K-State ends up with 17 points off of just 13 West Virginia turnovers. Uh, and in the second half, I mean, they end up with nine points off turnovers, and West Virginia only turned it over six times. So K-State took advantage of the opportunities when it was there, and Cam Carter had a terrible first half. Like, he was not very good. He was really good in the second half. He did a lot. He made all of his free throws tonight. He was finding guys. He made things go. And obviously, the defense is still a very important thing with Cam Carter's game. But early on, like transition-wise, I think he had one. Dorian Finister just continues to be a revelation. Um, all of these guys had a piece in what went down tonight. And Will McNair and David Gasson had massive nights, too, for K-State. So th this was probably the most complete team effort that we've seen from K-State all season. And it even comes with Tyler Perry reverting back to not having a very good night. I mean, he only got four sh shots off in total, uh, which, again, kind of goes down to maybe there's some of that confidence that's lacking and and whatever else. But K-State came through tonight. Yeah, and it, it's, again, I think that we'd be kind of remiss if we didn't throw out that uh, Jarrell Colbert six minutes tonight. Probably was the six minutes that the game kind of flipped on its head and got K-State going and it's three it's three straight games where we kind of talk about how k-state doesn't have a lot of depth that is probably where you want it to be but it's three straight games where somebody has came off the bench and played just a little bit and it's really impacted the game i mean he had four rebounds and two blocks in six minutes of play and I mean, we saw from taj manning and against chicago state we saw from dorian finister against ucf and now we see it with Gerald Col colbert against west virginia and we're also seeing that this team is kind of, I've kind of harped on it a little bit, not just this season, but last season where K-State has kind of lacked that killer instinct. But we kind of saw the killer instinct kick in, not just Saturday, but now we've seen it against uh, West Virginia as well, where uh, you get up and they just stay up. And the game never really felt in doubt for probably the last 10 minutes. Yeah, and and that's, I mean, that's, that's a that's an important deal. Even if you look at it and go, "Hey, it's just West Virginia. Like they're terrible, whatever." Th that's still a big deal for to just anything in the Big Twelve can be uncomfortable. I mean, we just saw Baylor go on the road to Oklahoma State, and you could make the case that Oklahoma State is worse than West Virginia, especially now that West Virginia has most of their pieces available to them. Um, so I, I think it's a big deal. K State handled it pretty well for the most part tonight. And you check off the box, and now you start to look ahead to what can go down in Lubbock this weekend. You've got momentum going down there, and you're going to have, honestly, two teams that at different points early in this season are looking around and not feeling probably the best about where things are trending. And all of a sudden, I mean, Tech is going to be 2-0 and and in the same boat as K-State because they're house in Oklahoma State this evening. So Yeah, the, it, that, that game turns into – a really important game going forward in the mm -hmm. Big Twelve, and who, yeah. who would have thought that both of those both teams would be two and zero at this point? Yeah, you'd, I probably, mean, you'd probably think that K State would be, but you wouldn't know how you would feel about K State going into that game. But I feel a lot better about K State going to Lubbock than I did even after the Chicago State game. Yeah, the only thing that probably uh, is a little more unfortunate for K State now is 
Tech in the middle of a, a strong start to their season record-wise, you're probably going to get like a true United Supermarkets Arena crowd on Saturday. But, you know, this this team might be ready for that now. And and Tech is easily going to be K-State's best test in conference play. And now that we kind of see them playing in a, you know, better manner. And it's going to be important to see how they handle it on, on Saturday because then you come home for a, a major week, like back-to-back home games. I mean, Baylor gives you a massive opportunity if you were to steal that game, and then you get what is another must-win. Really, they're, they're less must-wins and more can't-loses for K-State yeah. because Oklahoma State will come to town, and if you lose to Oklahoma State, especially at home, um, you're giving up a game to not only the Big 12, but the entire field that's trying to get into the NCAA tournament. So uh, that, that's important for K-State. Uh, real quick, any other guys that need to get mentions from tonight? I mean, we we gave Dorian Finister his love. He continued kind of doing what he's doing in his role. Drell Colbert stepped up, came in, and I mean, I, I don't think Drell Colbert is ever going to be a major minutes guy at K State, but he fit for what they needed tonight, which is also impressive considering the fact that West Virginia doesn't have a ton of size. So that was a guy that was in there. It's like you're going to be the biggest dude on the floor. Just stand up tall and play decent enough defense, maybe grab a couple boards for us. And he did. I mean, he came in in his only, uh, let's see, he played a total of six minutes, all of which were in the second half. He grabbed four rebounds for K-State. That's a pretty significant deal for uh, for Jarrell Colbert. So props to him for the minutes that he did give the Cats. He also had two blocks in those minutes, and uh, he was plus nine when on the floor. Uh, you maybe have already seen this, and look, plus minus can be kind of a uh, a not so trustworthy stat, but I think when it's so good or so bad, it does mean something. Arthur Kaluma got into foul trouble early in the game, whether it was warranted or not. Arthur Kaluma's plus minus was twenty four tonight. The next closest was Cam Carter at seventeen. So when Arthur Kaluma was on the floor, K State was 24 points better than West Virginia. That's not a coincidence. That's not a plus minus lying. Arthur Kaluma, that was easily his best game that he's given K State probably since LSU. Yeah, I think it was the most probably complete Arthur Kaluma performance. Uh, and I guess you kind of hit on this too, but it, it's just such a quiet and solid night for Will McNair. Like it doesn't always look the best when he's on the floor. But 12 points, nine rebounds, five of five from the field. I, I feel like yeah. that's another guy where, like, if we didn't talk about him too, uh, it's one of those, like, what are you doing? Like, how do you not mention that? And how about David Gasson from the free throw line recently? Yes. Seven of his last eight from the line. And I, he just looks so much more comfortable at the free throw line, which I think has been the biggest key for him. But 17 points, seven rebounds. Will McNair and David Gasson combined to miss one shot from the field tonight. I, I think that's one of those that comes down to like that's that's as much of a of a confidence thing as well. You know, if you think about uh, a guy like David Gasson who has struggled at the free throw line, and he's he's one of those guys that he struggles so much at the line, you're like it shouldn't be that hard. Like <laughs> the, you wonder how a guy it, free throws were like a true 50-50 proposition. David Gasson was shooting less than 50% there, uh, and it was not going very well. He stepped up tonight. His rebounding has been huge. Um, and, and then the scoring tonight, like as frustrating as I thought he was on the offensive end against UCF and in some other games where sometimes he's just not going to have it. He's going to have uh, he's going to have the drops or whatever you want to call it. He was clean offensively and smooth tonight, and that's a significant deal. Yeah, I mean, anything that you can get from Gasson and McNair kind of feels like gravy because you know what you're going to get most likely from uh, Carter, Kaluma, and Perry. So anything that they can add on to it is it, you will take. And it, it's just crazy that Dorian Finister is playing 22 minutes in a Big 12 game and was once again just very solid. Like this team probably needs somebody like Dorian Finister that can provide energy off the bench and just be solid. It's very true. I mean, he he is doing it. And, I mean, I wrote about it today. And there was another thing in Pig and Preview where I, I was like, hey, Dorian Finister, like, there, he's got he's got a, a star that is shining right now. And it's not in your 
typical way. Now, given tonight, he did kind of step up and do that. He he gave him six points, and uh, all three of his made buckets were dunks. But he played 22 minutes for him tonight. He was smart. He only had one turnover while he was out there. Grabbed a couple of boards, dished out a couple of assists, and he just busts his butt. And that is what Jerome Tang is looking for, and that is what is giving him minutes right now. Uh, so props to Dorian Finister for finding a way with this team, and uh, props to K-State for taking care of business. And as close to a, a comfortable as a win as they've maybe ever had in Morgantown. I'd have to go and and look through the history of the, the K-State-West Virginia matchup to see. But, I mean, even though it was uncomfortable at moments, it that was easier than almost any game that I can recall uh, in, in that building for K-State. I mean, I, I'll I'll take it a step further, and that's probably as comfortable of a, as a road win as K State's probably had in <laughs> in conference play in a long time. Yeah, it, you're probably right on that. It, it is hard to win in this league on the road, and I mean, we saw it with Houston tonight. That's crazy yeah. that their first true that their first Big Twelve road game they lose. Huh. It's not the American anymore now, is no, it? No, it's not. Uh, which I will be. Tw- I will tweet all season long to try and uh, infuriate uh, any of the Wichita State and no. American <laughs> fans that follow me or will see my tweets. Uh, yeah, the 2019 team that won in uh, Morgantown, they won by 14 as well. Um, similar fashion, the game was close at halftime. Uh, K State was up by a bucket in that game, so. Uh, he is tied for the easiest win K State has ever had in Morgantown. Uh, if you want to look at it that way, so props to the Cats for getting it done. And now it is on to Lubbock. We will have a full preview for that game uh, coming up this weekend as well, and plenty more coverage with K State throughout the evening and into the morning. Obviously, basketball a big topic of conversation, but also football will take center stage. If you're not on K State online and getting the scoops you deserve. You should go sign up right now because there is some football news on the horizon that uh, that might get you a little excited about K-State football, which I think people are already pretty excited about it, but uh, a good little burst of news possibly headed your way. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online. The Cats win it in Morgantown, 81-67. They're now 2-0 in the Big 12.